Hello, everyone. I'm Reverend Nick Bullitt, the Engagement Catalyst here at One Spirit, and I am so excited to be sitting here today with... Phyllis Curat. Hi. Hi. So good to see you. We are excited about your upcoming workshop that's focused on Wicca, and I would love for you to just share a little bit about your spiritual background as well as your professional background. I came from a, a humanist family. My mother's side of the family was Jewish. My father's side was Norwegian and a you know, real mix. And um, when I was about six years old, I asked my parents what we were because some of the kids were going to Hebrew school and some of them were going to Catholic school. And my mother said, um, we believe in the goodness of the human heart. And when you grow up, you can see for yourself whether God exists. Right now, all you need to know is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that was enough for me, more than enough for me, until I hit law school. And that's really when my spiritual journey began. I had been a little too young for the psychedelic 60s, so I, I missed out on all the fun stuff, uh, and didn't have, really have a frame of reference for what started to happen to me. But uh, I subsequently came to understand that it's something called a shamanic break. And I began to just simply perceive that the universe was not inanimate matter, right? But that it was awake and alive and conscious and very aware of me. And it sent me on a spiritual journey. And a few years later, after I'd graduated from law school and gone to Washington, DC to work as a public interest lawyer with Ralph Nader fighting organized crime in trade unions. Wow. Back to New York. I was working with a foundation doing the same kind of work. And I was led by a series of remarkable synchronicities. And I, but I was led by the goddess. Turns out it truly was the goddess. Uh, and through a friend, uh, I was brought to a group of, drum roll please, dun, 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 dun. witches <laughs> hidden in the back of a very dusty old bookstore on Ninth, West 19th Street in New York City. I would talk about the last place in the world that I would ever have expected to find myself. This was 1981, and it was really hidden back then. I went, I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't understand the language. I didn't understand the gestures. I did understand that I was in the company of a group of really remarkable women of every age, every race, uh, all kinds of backgrounds. It was fascinating. And I stayed and I worked with them for three and a half years and I became a priest. And then I started my own uh, groups and started teaching internationally. 20 years ago, I wrote a number of books that were international bestsellers and helped introduce the world's witchcraft. And I became, I went public in 1982. I went public because when I saw what it really was, that it was in fact the rediscovery and the rebirth of the indigenous wisdom tradition of our Euro and African ancestors. And that it had nothing to do with any of the negative stereotypes. I was like, the world needs this. This is precisely what has been missing. The divine feminine, the goddess, the understanding that the earth embodies the divine spiritual practices that you can use to take off the blindfold, to see the sacred. All of these critical parts were missing and were present, um, not through a belief system, but through a spiritual practice. And so I started my own circles and then I started teaching. I was the first, in fact, the first person to merge core shamanism with contemporary witchcraft or Wicca. And I think the way in which my spirituality has most evolved through the use of the integration of these core and universal shamanic techniques with the cultural overlay, the European cultural overlay of Wicca, is to discover that we all have access to realms of spirit, but among the greatest gifts that we receive there, information about healing and spiritual communion and insight into our unique spiritual journeys, our gifts, the challenges that we face. What do you want our students to walk away from after experiencing this Wicca workshop? Wicca is not a belief system. It's a spiritual practice. And you, you don't have to be Wiccan to benefit from the wisdom or to benefit from the practices. The spiritual teacher is present for all of us, no matter what your faith is. Discover, uh, there are a wide range of practices and techniques for, for, for encountering the divine that dwells within 
and in the natural world, for discovering the goddess, for discovering a new kind of God, for discovering the divine that is beyond gender, for having those encounters and that uh, personal revelation. We take off the blindfold to see the sacred and to experience it and that they will have a toolkit that they can integrate into whatever their spiritual path is. What do you see the connection with Wicca and nature? Well, because the divine is embodied, right? it is creation is the other half of spirit. Right? So there are realms of spirit, and then there is spirit embodied. And the natural world is, in fact, this embodiment of the divine, as are we. It is um, something we've forgotten. We have separated ourselves from the natural world. Uh, the cosmologies, the Abrahamic faiths have been largely, not exclusively, there are exceptions within it, but it, they have largely um, developed in the context of dominion, of having dominion over the earth. And indigenous traditions have a very different perspective through this uh, sacred system of practices. You experience the divine that is embodied by the natural world, by air by water, by fire, by all of the children of Mother Earth, by the plants and the animals, by all of creation. And it speaks to you. You learn to listen, you learn to see, the blindfold comes off and the things come out of your ears and the sacred speaks to you. It shows itself to you, it reveals itself to you and it will guide you. It will return lost parts of yourself to you, the natural aspects, we are truly nature and body. We are spirit and body. And there are missing parts of ourselves, of our souls, of our psyches, our minds, our hearts, our bodies. There is a wisdom that is present for us in nature that will reveal itself. All you have to do is enter, pay attention, listen. And of course, with the techniques, consciousness alters even more exquisitely. And the voice becomes even clearer and the visions become even brighter. And it's a beautiful way to live, and it's an essential way to live because the thing that is most needed right now is the return to right relationship with the natural world and to rediscover how to live in a sacred manner because we're living in a sacred world. And it turns out that nature's laws are actually spiritual principles. Nature offers us a cosmic blueprint, a template for how to live in a way that is harmonious, and interdependent and interconnected and reciprocal and balanced and at its heart it's called nature's secret magic and it's yes. one of my very favorite things that in fact